Hey everyone, Thrasher here. We are continuing our discussion on charge and attraction and repulsion, but in this video, we're really getting into why. What is causing these particles to sometimes repel away from one another and sometimes attract towards each other? It's known as Coulomb's Law, but really it's just a force, and hopefully that makes sense. Uh, when you have these things attracting and repelling, there's some force that's acting on them. It's sometimes referred to as the electric force because of electric charge, that new property we've learned about. But it's also referred to as Coulomb's Law. As a reminder, just to get ourselves situated, here was one of the examples at the top of my uh, screen right here showing one way of charging. We had two neutral spheres. Okay, they had the same number of pluses or minuses. And then all of a sudden, I brought a positively charged rod nearby. And what did we say happened to the electrons? Some of the electrons moved over. Well, let's just think about that. Here I have some electrons. They're just hanging out there at rest. If all of a sudden, when this rod is brought nearby, these electrons start moving, well, moving electrons, if they start at rest, that must mean they had some acceleration. If something accelerates, there must be some net force acting on it. So just by bringing this positively charged rod nearby, there must be some new overall force that is acting on our charges. This is really just what we're getting into. Okay, This Coulomb's law is this electric force. So attraction and repulsion between charges must be caused by a force. This force acts at a distance. Remember, this was an example where these two objects never actually touched each other. Okay, you don't need physical contact, unlike, imagine just like pushing something. If you want to push something, you need to make physical contact. Some forces, they don't require contact. They're referred to as at a distance forces. Okay, so this Coulomb's law, this electric force acts at a distance. It's always between two charges. Remember this diagram right here, a plus and a plus repel, a minus and a minus repel, and a plus and a minus attract. If I just had one charge all by itself in deep space, it wouldn't feel a force and it wouldn't exert a force. It's always between two different charges. We'll see that in the equation. It's also based on the distance, and that probably makes some intuitive sense. If I have charged objects that are really, really far away, well, maybe they don't really exert that much force, if any force, just because of that distance. All right. In the equation, we are going to see some mathematical symbols. Charge is Q, which we've seen before. And as a reminder, the charge of an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 Coulomb. We measure charge in Coulombs. This is a negative for an electron. For a proton, it's the same number, but it's a positive value. But charge will be Q. Distance will be in R. And I'll elaborate on that in just a second. OK, there's a lot going on in this screen. Right here is our main equation. This is Coulomb's law. This is the electric force. This is what it's referring to when you see Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law. Okay, it's just the equation for electric force. And this is what you see on the AP Physics 1 equation sheet. Okay, Q1 and Q2, those are the two charges. Because again, it's always between two charges. Here in this picture, one and one. Okay, here's a positive Q and another positive Q. There's some repelling force between them. Here in this diagram, there's a positive charge and a negative charge. There's a force between them. Okay, so Q1 and Q2 are the charge. R is the distance, how far away those two charges are from each other. They use the letter R for the term orbital distance. If you think of like um, kind of the classic model of an atom, maybe I have like a proton here and an electron right here, which is moving around. This could be described as the electron orbiting, and therefore it's orbiting at some radius away. Don't worry about it. R is just distance, but that's why they're not using the, the letter D. All right, this K, this is something new that we haven't seen before. It's a constant. Remember, we measure charge in coulombs. We're going to measure distance in meters, and this is giving us a force. But, you know, when the universe was created, they didn't know that there was going to be coulombs for charge created by these humans. If you just multiply two coulomb numbers together and divide it by a meter square, you're not actually going to get a force. You need some converter, essentially. This is just some constant. And it's really easy to remember, though it's on the AP Physics 1 equation sheet. It's 9 times 10 to the 9th, or 9E9 in your calculator. 9 times 10 to the 9th. These are the units. Again, you don't really have to worry about it. It's on the equation sheet. It's Newton's meter squares, meters squared over Coulomb squared. This is a force. It's still being measured in Newtons. Notice that in this equation on the AP equation sheet, they have these absolute value signs. 
we're pretty much always just going to look at this force in some positive value. Sometimes Q can be plus, sometimes it can be minus. We know that. There could be positive or negative charges. But if you plugged in, let's say, a negative charge here and a positive charge here, you get a negative number when you punch it into your calculator. But that negative is misleading. Remember, force is a vector. But that negative sign isn't due to direction. It's just due to one of these being plus and one of them being minus. That's misleading. It's confusing. So because of that, conventionally, you just take the absolute value. Even if you're told, like, oh, this here is an electron and this here is a proton. Well, don't plug in the negative sign. Or if you do, you know, you get a negative force, just drop that negative sign. They probably don't expect you to carry that in. Because, again, it's not really referring to the direction. Okay. There is something else I wanted to, to mention. I'm, in fact, going to erase where I have this E minus and P plus. Some students think that this Q1 and Q2, it has to be referring to, like, an electron or a proton or a proton and a proton or an electron or an electron. I can have other material. This is something measured in coulombs. You might be told there's some object with a charge of, let's say, six microcoulombs. Remember, a coulomb's a lot of charge. Micro times 10 to the negative six. That's kind of more to scale when we charge things. Don't think these values are always simply going to be a proton or an electron. If I go back to my simulator that we saw before, right now this balloon is neutral. Okay. Maybe when I rub it on that sweater, it gains a whole bunch of charge. Now, you know, maybe it says the balloon gained a charge of, I don't know, how many electrons do you see there? It looks like maybe it says, oh, it has a charge of 50 electrons. But it also just might say, oh, you have a balloon with a charge of negative 7 microcoulombs. You have a sweater with a charge of positive uh, 7 microcoulombs, something like that. Okay, Calculate that electric force. Don't think that it's always just going to be a proton here or an electron here. Okay, They might just give it to you in coulombs. Remember, coulomb is telling you how much charge an object has. The very last thing, then the video is all set. Sometimes you can get some conceptually confusing uh, questions regarding electric force. Here I have an example that we're not really going to work through. I just want to uh, explain what I mean about applying electric force, Coulomb's law. Here I have a minus 2q charge. Here I have a plus q and a plus 2q. We have just these three charged objects. Maybe imagine they're like little uh, metal BBs and they're given these charges. Okay. Well, there is a force between these two objects, right? You could probably guess that there is an attractive force. There's also a force between these two objects. So what I just did in blue, maybe you'll be asked a question like, find the net force for this middle object here. Well, there's going to be a force between these two and a force between these two. If I looked at this object, well, there's, again, this force between these two right here, and there's a force between these two. Remember, these forces are always in pairs. Okay, If I flipped over, I'll switch to yellow, and I looked at this object. Well, again, there's this force between them, between this particle and this one, and there's this other force. So if it's asking you to like write an expression or describe the net force, just kind of focus in on the particle that you're interested in, and then look at any of the other pairs that are existing okay yeah we're looking at this charge here but we don't really care about the force from these two if i was focusing in on my blue square there okay i just care about the forces that are acting between that particle that i'm interested in you'll get practice with that all right that's the end of my video thanks for watching